Hey, welcome back to another episode of the DealMakers Dose. My name is Matt Kerr. I'm the CEO and co-founder at Oakflow. And today we're going to talk about a tip, a strategy, or a tactic to help M&A professionals do one thing, which is close more deals. And I'm going to go ahead and share my iPad because I want to share a very powerful concept with you today called the bow tie funnel. And it's all about identifying where the chokeholds are in your M&A advisory or investment bank, or even as a private equity group and making sure we're solving the problem that is not the assumption or trying to pin the tail on the donkey, if you will. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. Alrighty. So what we can see here is something called the bow tie funnel, like I mentioned. And so it has about, let's see, about eight different steps. And this is everything from when you start to attract opportunities coming in the door. So you generating new deal opportunities and deal flow to then converting them to sign clients or an engagement of some sort, other to help them raise capital, recapitalization, or to sell their business. But then obviously there's a whole other phase you need to follow up on and focus on, which is fulfilling those opportunities, right? And closing the transactions. So let me just open up this first piece here. So we got this first phase here, which is all about, this is you acquiring. So this is acquisition, okay? And this next little piece over here is all fulfillment, fulfillment. I don't know if I spelled that right, but you get the point. So we got the first phase, which is all about you acquiring new opportunities and actually getting them assigned clients or assigned deals that you can then take to market and sell as an intermediary, right? What we have here in this first little phase I mean, let me walk you through each one step by step and then kind of walk you through where the bottlenecks pop up. The first phase is awareness, right? This first little piece here. And actually, let me color these in as I'm going. So the first one we got is awareness. The first piece we have here is awareness, which is you going out and creating awareness in the marketplace, whether it's through you sending emails to cold prospects, you sending LinkedIn messages or emails to warm prospects or past prospects, you going to events, trade shows, handshaking, baby kissing sending out articles, whatever it is, it's creating awareness in the marketplace. So that way you're not obscure. People know who you are to catch their attention, right? The next phase that we have here is something called attracting, which is you stimulating interest to prospects for them to create availability to have a conversation with you. That what I just said to you right there is literally lead generation 101, which is you stimulating interest with prospects to create availability. That is the only outcome for leads. It's not to close them. It's not to see if they're ready now. That's not none of that. It's to stimulate interest to create availability. The next phase is after you have an opportunity and you create availability with that prospect and you start having dialogues, you want to move to this next phase, which is converting them. Converting does not mean signing them. Converting them means you're starting to have a process and a, trans, a transition point where you're sending over proposals. They're reviewing them. It's kind of like that that dialogue of where you're now actually starting to hit that inflection point where you're trying to work out a deal for them to actually sign with you as an intermediary or as a broker, right? Then once you follow through that process, this is where you know you finally do you get that monetization, which is you actually signing the client and you now have either that retainer or they're signed on. However, your engagement process works, it doesn't matter. That's where you actually do end up, you know, hitting them hitting them as a client. So that way you can move into the next phase, which is you fulfilling on the deal. And I don't need to preach on this stuff. This is just this first little phase here is um, confidentiality agreements getting signed, indication of interest, LOI, and due diligence. Now that's the whole fulfillment phase. Again, you already understand that fully. I don't need to walk through that at all. And I don't have any business walking you through that because that's what you're an expert at. So what I want to walk you through though is this, is a big issue I see with either our clients or clients that come to us is they're solving the problem that actually isn't. They're solving the problem that isn't. What I mean by that specifically is they might already have worked with another company or have their own system, or maybe they're working with us now and want to stop working with us because they have all these leads coming in, right? We have all these leads and opportunities coming in and everything's working, but it's, there's a chokehold, some kind of chokehold pops up. Let's say the chokehold is right here. Let's say we have a nice process going where we're creating awareness and we're getting people on the phone but there becomes a restraint where the deal closing doesn't happen as frequently as they'd like to, right? Or you, whatever, whatever your marketing initiatives you're using, it could be a referral process. You have a pay-per-click, maybe you're working with us, doesn't matter. And the thing is, is because there's no systematic way for you to actually get them through there. And the real reason why is because we're so focused on doing something like working our deals and fulfillment. We're so focused on getting these IOIs pushed over to LOIs and just trying to get this process moved down so that way we can finally and hopefully get to what we really ultimately want, which is that big grand finale deal and get our success fees, right? Because I get it. That's what rings the register. But the problem is, is when we get so bogged down in fulfillment and we're so focused there and we don't focus on actually creating a streamlined system to create those opportunities and move them through a process where we allocate time, 
structure and a system into it, we're not going to get really anything done. It's going to be, you're going to be focusing on, okay, I need to get the LOIs done and push them over and get something to do an LOI phase, find that right buyer. And then, okay, once we get that down, I got to get to due diligence. That way I can st- take a step back, let the deal kind of transact and close. That way I can get my success fee. And we get so bogged down and busy and we come up for air to look and we go, wow, we have all of these opportunities that are so clogged up, but I haven't closed any yet. And the reason why is because we're so busy over here and we haven't put any focus on, okay, we have to focus on cooking dinner tonight while planning for breakfast tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? This is you cooking dinner for tonight so you can eat, but you need to be planning dinner or breakfast for the next morning so that way you can eat down the road again. So a statement I'll leave with you, another statement I'll leave with you is the headlines you're reading today is from all the work you did six months ago. Let me say that again. The headlines that you read today of the successes you're having, or even the failures you're having is because of the work you did or did not do six months ago, right? So we need to make sure as we're looking at this bow tie funnel, and this is kind of the workflow of how opportunities come into all the way to close. We got to make sure three things, uh, three questions I kind of want to leave you with. First one is, do you have systems allocated at each phase of the process in this kind of bow tie funnel phase? Do you have, do you have systems in place that are workable both to acquire customers and to fulfill them with time allocation on both, okay? The second question I have for you is, are you playing pin the tail on the donkey, right? You're running around trying to pin a tail on one thing and you kind of leave the other. You you don't really pay attention to it. You kind of get dizzy and disoriented and you kind of go, oh, I got to fix this now. And you kind of run over and, right? That's the one thing we got to look out for. And the last question I'll, I'll leave you with is, where is the true bottleneck in the process? Where is the true bottleneck? If you look at it like this and kind of like break it out is, okay, do we have lots of opportunities? Yes or no? If it's yes, it's like, okay, good. Are we doing a good job at getting them on the phone? And then do we have a process then at converting them and getting them into a dialogue where where there's a transition point of us sending up proposals? There's a feedback loop going back and forth where we're trying to work out what the structure of the deal looks like for me to represent them. Okay, good. What is our closing rate from that? You know what I'm saying? And then looking at the rest of your fulfillment process as well, identifying what is the true bottleneck and where do we actually need to be working versus versus a guessing game or, oh, I need to put this thing on hold because I need to focus on this. If something's working, you don't want to put it on hold. You don't want to stop it. You don't want to ignore it, whatever it is. So if you work with another company or you are doing another initiative or you're working with us, don't put things on hold. Don't stop things. Don't wait and see. Find a true bottleneck and then fix the bottleneck. You never want to stop growth and scaling to solve a problem that actually isn't a problem, right? I'm not saying we throw more gas on the fire. If it's not working, I'm saying let's identify the real problem and fix it. So that's what I want to leave you guys with is those three questions. I hope this bow tie funnel kind of gives you a nice perspective of how does each phase work when it comes to acquiring new opportunities, pushing them through, actually acquire them as a signed client and then moving them to fulfillment and making sure that we're not getting bogged down in the wrong problems. And so that way we can ultimately do one thing, which is close more transactions. Hopefully this is helpful. Reach out to us if you have any questions. I'll look forward to your feedback. Thanks. Have an awesome rest of your week. Bye.